For the next 24 hours, I'll be working in a three Michelin star restaurant. There are only 13 in the United States out of the roughly 600,000 restaurants that exist. But as I'm sure you know, great food doesn't start at the restaurant. We'll be starting our day at a farm. Jeff. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. I'm Mike Tusk. I'm the owner and chef of Quint's restaurant in San Francisco. So let's explore the farm. Yeah, let me show you around. Fresh run farm on the coast of uh, Northern California. It's a 240 acre property. How much of your stuff comes from here? How much would you say you take for dinner each night? 50% of the vegetables and fruits, herbs. I mean, it's a huge farm and it's a long drive to get here. We got to go over the Golden Gate on our way here. I mean, it's a commitment, but then you come out here and you have all this. It's kind of magical. Right here, you've got some lemon verbena. Oh my God, that is incredible. So we'll use that in, you know, sauces, tisons. It's almost like a lightly sweeter lemony smell. You've got rosemary on the other side, you've got thyme, you've got anise hyssop, you name it. If it grows here, we'll grow it. The takeaway that I'm having right now, and I know it sounds kind of silly to say on a farm, but if you just look over here, it's just, there's so much green. Everything's so bright green. This is probably one of my more favorite plantings. Any idea what that is? No. Let's go find out. Whoa, whoa. Oh my gosh. Sun chokes. No way. I, I did not expect that when you pulled that out. It looks like a bunch of eggs. You can imagine how many plants there are here right now. So we'll be having sun, sun chokes on the menu for the next three months or so. Are these um, sun golds? They are. Whew. This is my favorite tomato. And eat that. It's like a little candy. It is so good. Driving out here brings you inspiration, you think? Oh, definitely. Nice, nice to meet you. you. Nick, you. what is it like working with a superstar chef? What does that dynamic look like? You know, chef and I will talk every year about what we're growing and what we might experiment with. It's kind of interesting to think about how much you could potentially dictate, you know, the menu. But it's not me, it's it's it's, it's actually like the climate. Being at the pinnacle of the restaurant world, but also having to be that flexible is kind of crazy. Back in the restaurant, and I must say, feels good to be wearing a chef's coat again. To start off the day, we had a midday meeting around 12.15 in the afternoon. A few of the team members talked through the menu where they had very specific and well-documented preferences on every single guest dining tonight. For me, it was amazing to see so many of the ingredients from the farm represented on the menu right after we'd just been there. Nice to meet you. I'm CK, I'm the baker here. Today, I'm making Quince's service bread. This is a olive rosemary batard made with Castel Ventrano flour. We also brush it with olive oil from Sicily. This is kind of just an ode to Sicily. You have to be so delicate with these, huh? Yeah, you have to be pretty delicate. They're proofed up and I don't want to lose them, the right? air that's inside of it. So you're a pro. I'm almost a pro. Almost a pro. You always have something to learn, right? Yeah, there's always stuff to learn. I won't lie to you. I'm not the world's best baker. You don't bake at all? I try and I just I mess it up. I think a lot of people are scared to bake because of that. There's rules to follow, but once you know the rules and you yeah. can kind of play around and have yeah. more fun with it. You don't want to go too deep, right. deep enough to where it's going to open up a bit. Try to use one point of the razor. Yeah. I might not be as fast as you. That's okay. That looks good. I'm going to brush it with some Sicilian olive oil. This is how it? we finish it when we serve it to the guests. It makes it nice and shiny. Maldon salt. That's it. That's it. Very good. Thank you. Oh yeah. So this is uh, Chef Cecilio. He's preparing some pasta for tonight for us. He's making some Agnello Tini del Plim, type of pasta from Italy. So we like to serve those with a green dough made with spinach. So this is a very traditional pasta dough. Eggs, flour, and just some blanched spinach. We're gonna serve it with a squab jus. So he's making macaroni now, but he's gonna do it by hand using this. So Chef Cecilio is working on another kind of pasta that we are running in the menu. A dough made out of rimacinata without eggs. We only use this kind kind of metal bar and we roll the pasta in a way they curl itself. My name's Owen. Okay. Uh, I run the fish station here. Cool. I attend all the seafood orders. These are baby sea bream yeah. from Japan. Yeah. The baby Japanese baby. name is Kasugo, translates to spring child. These are beautiful. Yeah. With these guys, they have really, really unforgiving bins here. Damn. Yeah, you don't want to touch it because they have a lot of bacteria there. So what I do yep. is I'll take my knife and okay. I'll just start trimming off all the fins first. Oh, right away. Right away. Okay. This is going to make the scaling process a lot easier and I'm going to split it all the way up and then I'm just going to scale. It's actually really satisfying, huh? So just a quick rinse, minimal water, and now that guy's ready to fillet. I'm going to go behind the fins here, flip it this way. I make an incision all the way down to the tail. I hear that click. I'm going to go up and over a little bit come out the tail this way and then I just flip over. So that's kind of how I get my rhythm. And then just for aesthetics, I'll start to clean it up. It's amazing to me how much like time and care will go into each small fish. Just around like that? Angle it back towards the eyeball. So that's gonna let you allow you to harvest more of this meat up here. This is where the meat's at, this is the collar here. So you wanna get right in there under there. Right up kind of around the top, yeah. right? All the way through. Boom. So now you got it, right? Cool. Then you're gonna get back up here. 
And then for this, you're just coming around the top. Yeah. Like you said, in one mm -hmm. nice, yeah. long stroke. How am I doing, Manny? Yeah. yeah, nicely done. I'm Grace, working our cucumber dish, which is a cold dish. It's our second course. My name is Caitlin. I am on Garmage. I am doing the tomato dish. Our cucumber dish has like seven different components. Okay. So it's a base of an avocado puree. Um, and then we put on brulee avocado Parisians. This is Japanese cucumber. So this is the serpent cucumber. And the cool thing about it, even after you peel it, you can still see the stripes on it. And I do little pearls of this as well. We just kind of scoop it up and then you get the stripes right on top. And then I compress that with elderflower tea. And they're just gonna marinate until service. Mm -hmm. For the tomato dish, we have a couple different tomatoes. All of the tomatoes are peeled. These tomatoes right here are demi-sec tomatoes, which we basically dry out in the oven. These these are Milton tomatoes. Yeah, that's Damn. Insane. It's just a like very, explosion. It's like a very tomato. sweet tomato -y. <laughs> Hi there, my name is Christina Kelba. I'm the executive pastry chef at Quince Restaurant. We're working on our main dessert, which is gooseberries from Kibo Farm um, with Dulce Varona chocolate. And this is our cannelé mix. It takes two days to make. Why does it take two days? It has to sit for that long. The molds are copper and then they're brushed with beeswax before being filled and baked. Oh, wow. Beeswax? Beeswax, it makes them shiny, helps them unmold. So these are our pistachio chouquette for the evening. Um, it's just pas de choux. Pas de choux, it's the cream puff. So you're taking the tweezers and you go into the bottoms of each one? Exactly. It just makes it a little easier to fill. So these pistachios are from Bronte, Sicily. And it's just like a pistachio puree, basically? Pistachio pastry cream mm -hmm, that we mix the praline and the paste in. Wow, it actually tastes like really sweet pistachio gelato in, in a way. That makes That's perfect sense. Right. So what you're gonna do, you insert the tip all the way up and then you just apply pressure and as it gets full it'll come out a little bit but you just slowly start to pull out. See this is not my forte. How far out do That's you want to pull? Is yeah, that fine? That's great. Learning so much today. Oh wow. It's really good. Thanks for having us over of here. Course. Today we have a live king crab that will be for one of our hot appetizer courses about mid-menu. So we got this crab in yesterday from one of our uh, prime seafood purveyors. I think he's a little bit asleep because he's been inside of our cooler for a little bit but as you check there he's definitely still alive. Like when he actually spread this thing out it's it's a massive crab. Incredibly large, huh? We steam it at 100 Celsius, or I guess 212 Fahrenheit at a rolling boil. And if we get it straight from the purveyor and we throw it straight into the oven, it takes a little bit less time. But for this one, because it's coming straight out of our cooler, it's gonna be a little bit colder. So this is gonna be for a past course. Right here, we have our live sea urchin from Fort Bragg, which is actually a pretty amazing product. It is so fresh. It's just out of the water yesterday. This is for our passion fruit risotto, which is one of our supplement courses. These are the spine, the feet, and the mouth, basically. It'll go onto rocks and harvest like plankton and algae. You can see the mouth actually moving. Gonna take scissors. Once you damage the nerve, it basically all the spikes shoot out. Just going on a circular motion, we're gonna expose the uh, gonads or the tongues. And from here, you can see all the gonads are exposed. Just slowly scraping down, leaving the tongue as intact as possible. This one's nice. These tongues are actually this is perfect. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Wow. All right, so this has been steaming for eight minutes. We're just gonna snip on the side there, on the side there. And then if you twist, you pretty much unleash the leg. I actually like to use my tweezers to temp it, just because it's a thicker piece of uh, metal. I feel it conducts the heat a lot better. So you're just making sure that it's cooked through, or cooked what? Cooked all the way through. Got yeah. it. Mm -hmm. And if it's like warm inside, you're good. You actually want it to feel hot on the inside, oh, so you, you know it's oh, cooked all the way through. Yeah, pretty hot for the king crab. Okay. So this is ready to go. I'll submerge this one, and I'll just finish snipping the rest of the legs. I mean, look at the color on the yeah, king crab leg, too. It's one of the more special products that we definitely did in. Hi, I'm Matt Hall. Uh, I run the meat station here at Quiz. So tonight we have Pain Farm Squab. We serve it with different variations of corn, baby corn, and corn ash. Basically what you see here is the whole squab for the most part. The roulade is basically composed of two breasts. They're kind of like a sandwich in here. In between it is a layered black truffle and squab mousse that we make with the tenders. We debone the thigh right here. And we fill in with squab mousse. And then it gets wrapped in pancetta and then also roasted at 60 degrees Celsius. So this is the whole heart. We just cure it with like kind of like a foie gras cure that we use to cure foie. We just kind of grill it to medium rare and serve it. This is another uh, protein from uh, West Marin. And this is a whole lamb. It is. We buy uh, as many of the animals uncut and do all the butchery here. Look at this. And in peak season, we were going through, uh, for the spring lamb, about 24 lambs uh, a month. I go about breaking this down by uh, separating the legs, the loin, 
the rack and the shoulder. Everybody knows uh, in the kitchen wow. how to, you know, we have little classes on uh, days that we're not open. Right. And I'm just gonna separate the legs and flip it over. And it's just a straight cut home stretch going through the blade bone. I've never seen anything like that. That was cool. Yeah. A master at work. Excellent. Hi, my name's Adam. I run the wine program over at Quince. Hi, uh, I'm Joseph, um, wine director for Quince & Co. We're here in Quince & Contogion's wine cellar. Uh, we have about somewhere around 8,000 bottles of wine in here. It's massive. Many people would probably make Manny stay by the door. I wouldn't let him around this, this much <laughs> stuff. He's a little bit... Like a bull in the china. Oh, we, we, we can trust him. <laughs> we can trust him. We have a number of different wines from uh, some of the, sort of the classic regions of Europe, as well as a little bit of California. Much like the produce we work with at the restaurants, right? It's about finding people who are making cool stuff and championing them. So it's 3.30. Yeah, basically we clean the kitchen, family meal comes up. And family meal, explain what that is. Everybody just eats together, two restaurants, one building. But it's nice, the idea of the whole staff being a family and everyone just hangs out. It's the calm before the storm. Exactly. And often family meals made up of maybe scraps that from the day before or nice new stuff that you have that you just want to feed people. Yeah, having the farm, we have a lot of different uh, products. Before every service, we taste all the dishes. And you have everyone make them exactly as they'll go out later exactly if there's an issue i have them make it again okay we okay. taste it again any adjustments any problems okay we correct them right now so dinner service is about to start i'm lucky enough tonight that i get to change and try some of the food on the other side but chef is it okay if i leave manny with you here to watch some of the action oh yeah manny will be here until the wee hours in the morning have fun manny for the first course of the night we have these canapes and according to the chef they rotate on the menu every single night i have to say when a dinner starts out looking like this you know it's going to be good man that was really good yeah that was quite good Wow, this one looks so cool. Those are really good. And this last one here looks insane. Whoa, that's crazy. The first true course this evening is called Tomatoes on the Rocks Aquapaza. As we remember from this morning at the farm, we got to pick some of those fresh sun gold tomatoes. So it's gonna be really amazing for us to see this dish come together. It looks so pretty. It's one of those ones that you don't wanna mess up. Light, refreshing. It's almost like a really cold, unfinished gazpacho in the best way possible. This, I must say, looks like a gigantic cheese, and I don't mind it one bit. Well, a dust of tomato powder flew all over me. We're gonna talk about opening uh, and decanting an old bottle of wine. I can't really get over the fact that we are opening a bottle of wine from 1955. Just the, the, the concept that it sat there that long. Yeah, and beautifully well cared for in this case, it looks like. So with this, we want to be careful for a couple reasons. One, the wine is going to have a lot of sediment, right? It's been sitting in there. Right here, we have a pretty clean cork, it looks like. For regular wine, I'm going to tell you the best corkscrew is a $10 one. For wines like these, we use a special tool called the Duran, and we keep the wine in the cradle like this because it's been sitting here like this for a long time, so everything has settled. How much is a bottle like this, by the way, guys? This is on our list for... Pretty expensive. Or probably $600, okay. so not crazy crazy. You can't mess this up, huh? Yeah, you can. Yeah, well, we have ways to fix it if we do, but we prefer not to. So here we go, all out in one piece. You can see there will be a little schmutz in there, but the cork is all the way out, which is what we want to see. So now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to taste the wine. In this case, the wine is phenomenal. Do you like a taste? Is this be the oldest wine you ever had? Yeah, yeah, this will be the oldest wine I've ever had by far. Okay. Wow, that's amazing. So you can see full of depth full of complexity. That's just nuts. The wine has come out clean, it's perfect, um, and we're gonna be thrilled to serve this to our guests. That was special, thank you. I can now say I tried a wine about as old as my grandmother. Cheers, gentlemen. <laughs> thank you. Next up on the menu, we have a cucumber dish with elderflower and pistachio. We have cucumbers six different ways. We have a cucumber broth blended with an avocado puree. We have serpent cucumbers, Japanese cucumbers, lemon cucumbers, gherkins that are pickled. On top, we have little gherkin blossoms and brulee avocado. And we finish it off here with our cucumber and avocado granite. Especially with my Persian background, there is nothing I love more than good cucumber. Let's take a bite. Whoa. I'm not saying much about the food so far, because in many cases, there aren't very many words that can describe it. Gotta feed my cameraman. Mm. Course number three, chanterelle mushrooms with saltus and lardo. I'll admit, mushrooms have never been one of my favorite things in life, but let's see if they can change my mind with this one. These mushrooms look so perfect. Oh, it's really good. Course number four, king crab with savoy cabbage, soybean, sudachi, and from what I heard, some brown butter as well. It was really cool getting to watch that whole king crab be broken down today. Now we get to taste the dish. 
That's gotta be one of those bites where the Michelin guide comes in and decides right then and there that they get three stars. Next up, we have the Mano Grano Felicetti Spaghetti. I hope I pronounced that right. On it, we have caviar, then beet, yuzu, and sturgeon crema. So far, this is the most beautiful dish of the night. God, it's beautiful. I just don't even wanna mess this one up. And of course, I gotta dip it in the sauce, get the perfect bite. That is my favorite dish so far. Sometimes with the pretty ones, you wonder if they're actually gonna taste good, but. That's insane. Next up, we have a saffron risotto with spot prawns, sea urchin, and sea beans. This looks insane. The way they cooked these spot prawns was incredible. So in particular, I can't wait to taste those. Uni is one of my favorite foods. I gotta take a big bite of this one. That's really good. So many incredibly good things on one plate. Wow. Next up, we have snapper a la plancha with some artichoke and razor clam. I actually filleted a few of these myself today. So I'm excited to dig in. The flavor of the razor clam is delicious. And the fish is so simple. It's great, yummy. Next up, we have this pasta dish that has almonds, tomatoes, some pesto, a little bit of olive oil, Parmesan cheese, and a pinch of lemon zest on top. It smelled incredible in the kitchen as they were cooking it, and I can't wait to dig in. Mmm, that's one of my favorites. Coolest part about this dish might actually be the texture of the pasta, a shape that I've never tried before, but is very unexpected. This is the Agnolatini Verde, where we have a filling of smoked squab, some of those sun chokes that we harvested ourselves earlier today, and some black truffle. It was so much fun watching them make this earlier. Let's give it a taste. Oh my God. I think this might be my favorite dish so far. That's really good. We're nearing the end. This dish is the squab. As we learned from the kitchen earlier, it's basically just a combination of squab and a couple different types of corn. This looks so good. Let's start with the lollipop. Oh, that's so good. Nice big bite. So tender. This puts a filet mignon to shame. We've got an off the menu lamb dish here. It's got the lamb that the chef broke down earlier right in front of our eyes, as well as a bunch of vegetables straight from the farm that we saw earlier. I am always a sucker for lamb. The lamb tastes so tender and so pure. But now I hear it's time for dessert. To finish things up, we have a grape dessert. And I must say, there aren't many things better in this world than something with a perfect flavor of grape. That's really good. I've said that a lot today. The final dish, the last dessert, has gooseberry, coffee, chocolate, and caramel. I love gooseberries. Day in the life at a three Michelin restaurant. After such a great meal, we couldn't leave without giving the team a giant burger and pizza party. It was a long 15 hour day for everybody. Time for some food.